woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Oh boy, we really got an audience now. You ready? Drum roll. Perfect. So how many of you guys have uh, experienced cutting dovetails? You have? By hand? Sort of by hand, yeah. Sometimes it can be. Uh, the, the demonstration I'm gonna do today is in, we'll be using this Keller fixture. And the reason I ask about hand cut dovetails is the reason being that the Keller system actually simulates, if you will, hand cut dovetails about as close as as you can get. The other machines out there, like Lee and uh, uh, Porter Cable, they all work basically on the same principle with guide fingers and some sort of a guide system off your router. The advantage that this Keller system has over the rest of them, in my opinion, is it's got a top guided or like a pattern bit bearing. So what this does, in, in the case of the Keller system, is it takes the air if you have any concentricity issues out of your router. In other words, this kind of stuff out around causes big problems, especially in half-blind dovetailing. Uh, this Keller system, by the way, I was just going to go ahead and demonstrate doing this box like this today, a little complex, but I thought maybe I better just demonstrate the joinery first on how the system works, uh, just so you get a feeling of what this machine actually is capable of doing. Uh, just to, to start off, it only does through dovetails. You all familiar what through is versus half blind? Okay. This will only do through dovetails. Out of the box, its limitation is three quarter of an inch uh, thickness of material. Reason being, that's the length of your router bits, okay? You can get down to uh, eighth inch material, but it, it involves getting another bit set that's uh, uh, miniatures to do miniature type dovetails. So it does have versatility, but as far as setup, the reason I use the Keller system and demonstrate it more often than any other machine here is just the simplicity of using it, okay? So basically what the system is, is this, this is your tail guide, in other words, for cutting the dovetails. It works in conjunction with the dovetail bit, okay? <clears throat> and then you have the pin guides, okay? So this cuts the pins, okay? So most people, when they're hand cutting dovetails, simply set up and lay out to cut. I'll have to set this like this. What I normally do is, is, is center this, the machine the best I can just by eye, okay? on the deal. Normally I would use these clamp systems, but I got it, the clamp set up for doing this, so for just demonstrations of the joinery in itself, I'm going to try to get it hooked up with uh, just a, a auxiliary set of clamps here, uh, just to get started here, so you can see basically the operation of this machine. Uh, <clears throat> so like I said, all I've done here is, is approximate, putting the, the, the thing on center of, of the board here, okay? Typically, most people in, in hand cutting dovetails start with a half pin, okay? They'll start with a half pin top and bottom on that thing and lay out, you know, the symmetry for the rest of the dovetail joint however they wish. Uh, my opinion is I start as close as I can to a half pin, generally over like three quarters or even a full pin, uh, or tail I should say. And that's why they made table saws and sanders because you can cut them down so they look like half, half ones, okay? Um, notice no guide bushing, okay? We're going to call this our tailboard, okay, that we've got set up in here, just a piece of scrap, piece of poplar, I believe. This is going to be the pin board, so what i got to do first after I've got this set up to center is simply going to set my, my cutter depth by scribing a line, okay, Sim similar to what you do in hand cut dovetails. Now all I'm going to do is set my router depth to that line, wherever it is. Maybe just a little bit past the line. That's close enough. In terms of safety gear, if anybody wants uh, earphones or something, let me know. I can go get those. I put this shield up here to protect me, not you. Just kidding. This machine doesn't have any dust coll uh, collection on it. <clears throat> so 
So, all I'm going to do here first is cut the tails, okay? I want to make sure my clamps are out of the way. Okay, and if we're ready. See, now I actually I have really a full tail all the way through. So theoretically, I should have made those halves, but this just depends on the width of your board. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is cut the pins that go with that thing. And I gotta make a bit change here in the router. <clears throat> Cut the pins, I gotta switch over to the straight bit. Okay. It's the same thing in every other machine that's out there, in any of fixture that does dovetailing. It's straight bit versus dovetail bit, except for half blinds. Half blinds just simply uses the dovetail bit. <clears throat> By the way, this was uh, one of the miniature bits for doing miniatures. You notice how it's all chipped up? That's what happens when you run into your clamps. <laughs> See? Did you let somebody else use your no, I did it myself. Well, I, what I was doing was, was trying to set up, uh, just like I'm doing here with these manual clamps, uh, I wasn't just paying attention, typical of what happens. Now, in any of you that tried to hand cut dovetails, you take your tailboard, okay, all I do here is simply set it up on the pin board and scribe where those pins have to be cut, okay? That just gives me a reference. I didn't pay a lot of particular attention to that. But what I'll do now is set this in that same approximation. I wonder if I can use this. Maybe I can clamp this. I think I can. Actually, I got to cheat here, guys. Bear with me a minute, because, like I said, I have this thing set up for doing this particular piece. But I decided to show a little bit of different uh, variety of this machine. We we'll take this tear off of here. The thing that's nice about this machine because there's no side stops. <clears throat> if I centered my tails, then the pin template better be centered. Does that make sense? Because if, if it is, in fact, everything should work out copacetically. <clears throat> Same thing here for setting the depth of cut. As I take my tailboard, scribe a line, that's my router setting depth. Okay. That's probably a little deep, but demonstration purposes, it'll work. Any bets? Not today. There. Now that's the basic operation of the machine. <clears throat> it's a seven degree dovetail. So, like I said, that was done with what they call a 1600 machine. Sixteen hundred is the number. Here's their entry machine. I often tell people that are interested in this thing. 
This is basically the, the entry machine. This is what they call a 1500 series. You got your tails, guides on this side, and the pins on this. So instead of having two blocks, you just it's run on a single block and you just simply flip it back to back. This has one extra set of pin and tail uh, uh, guides. It also has longer tail guides, so when you're cutting tails, you can actually stack up, I can stack up three pieces of half inch material and cut all three of the tails at one time. I always end up with an odd piece, but it takes two sides to a drawer, doesn't it? Anyway, that's basically the entry machine, then goes to this one. Uh, then he makes a 24 inch machine, and he makes a 36 inch machine, longer stuff. The other thing about this, I don't know if you noticed, uh, I didn't show it when I had it in clamp, I can later, but you can actually run this machine upside down on a router table if you wanted to once your piece is clamped into it. Set your bits up in the router table and do the same thing. That way you can get a little bit of dust collection. So, <clears throat> One of the things I like to, to brag about on this machine is I can start out with four pieces and end up with a, a, a box. With these other machines, I generally start with about six pieces because you got to do test cut and test cut. I don't care how much record keeping you ever done. You got to test cut until you get the dreaded thing, it, it, not fit, but then engagement and everything else. This one, once you're set, it's, it's good to go. Um, joint fit on the machine, by the way, is, uh, if you understand anything about any of these other machines, the, the fit is governed by the, the thickness of the, the, of the pin. Okay, what he does for you on these machines, and you probably can't see it back there, but he scribes a line right here. And when you build this block of wood that this mounts to, you simply line that face up on that scribe line. That gives you a good starting reference point for the joint fit. Okay, and then if you want to make minor adjustments, these are slotted so you can actually slide that back and forth just minutely to change the thing. A lot of times, if I've got a, a joint that's too tight or too loose, for example, if it's too loose and I want to make it uh, a smaller. Uh, pin, I'll simply put some tape, duct tape across the face, and then make my cut because it moves it out just a fraction of enough to change that fit a little bit. Okay? But that's basically the operation of the machine. So, <clears throat> what I wanted to do here today is uh, experiment a little bit just for fun. And that would be to try to cut compound angles with that same machine, if I remember how this goes. Yeah. Are you going to demonstrate the lead jig too? Not today. Did you want me to? <laughs> Do you have that lead jig? <laughs> no, the, the lead jig, uh, yeah, I hadn't planned on doing that today. I just wanted to familiarize people with this machine and really dovetailing and then try to do something that nobody's ever done before, maybe. You ever dealt with compound angles? Never? You want to? <laughs> you know, I, I think we were talking about that this morning, me and another customer. Uh, you know, when we first tried this thing to make a, a, a compound angle cut, you would think 45 and 45 put together on, on that uh -uh, doesn't work. And so what, what I've uh, found that works the best instead of just keep adjusting and adjusting to make things work is go to this website there's a compound angle calculator, okay? If you're, somebody wants to look at this thing, it's really a pretty slick uh, deal because in, in its formula, all you got to do is put in the number of sides and your, your angle from vertical, and it'll tell you what that angle is. And believe it or not, you would think when, when I'm going to butt this in there that that should be a straight cut here. It's not. It's 3.8 degrees. So the sides that butt in had to be angled at 3.8. My challenge here today is to make sure I got all these put in the machine right so this thing fits together. So, anyway, <clears throat> we'll go back to the dovetail deal here. What I'm going to try to do is 